Hey Genderqueer Chat, happy Friday, it's Matt and thank you to Joe for switching with me this week and taking the um, Tuesday spot um, as I was unable to put a video up so thank you very much Joe and here I am on Friday, hi. <laughs> um, so this week's topic is what are some stereotypes or assumptions about gender that irritate, amuse or confuse you and um, how do you address these when they come up? So like mostly everybody else has stated, um, whenever somebody tries to stereotype or categorize or put somebody in a box or assume that somebody is going to be or feel or think something in a certain way um, based on their physicality, um, that really irritates me. Um, I don't understand how the complexity of someone's personality or the totality of somebody's identity and experience and life history can just be pushed aside and replaced with such a, a basic, narrow-minded, um, outdated and dysfunctional notion of what it is to be male or female. Um, so yeah, one of the ways that stereotypes bug me the most is when somebody starts off a sentence or makes a statement that's something like, um, so you're a guy, or you're a girl, or give us a guy's perspective, stuff like that. So I really hate it when um, people make an assumption based on how you present um, or how they perceive you, and then assume that you're going to act or respond or feel something or experience something in the same way that they think that every other male or every other female is going to think or feel or experience that. So that's one of my pet hates. Um, in regards to gender roles, uh, and I acknowledge that these have changed over the years and that um, it's not quite as black and white as it used to be, but there's still huge stereotypes and assumptions made on um, gender roles, especially to do with like the workplace and family. Um, so as I said in my last video, I did um, spend quite a few years as a stay-at-home parent. Um, so I was very much taking on that traditional stereotypical uh, mother role and um, I found that when I went in public uh, with the child so like if we went to the library or something and there was lots of parents and other children there playing you'd get these looks or sometimes they'd say something that was kind of cutesy or tokenish sort of statements like oh look at that look there's dad he must have the day off work um, hanging out with the kid, how sweet. So you're yeah, very much this cutesy kind of tokenish thing which um, you know, makes you feel like your identity as a parent um, playing that role, being the primary caregiver, um, staying at home, looking after the child, making, you know, making sure that they're safe and well and happy and dressed and cleaned and all that sort of stuff um, is kind of all pushed aside and somehow you're just this like dad who's got the day off work and he's hanging out with the kid. Um, yeah, so that really bugs me and I'm sure it works the other way as well with mothers or um, female identified people in the uh, workplace. But um, from my perspective, I did I did get to experience what it's like to be um, a dad doing a mum's role and how people perceive that. Um, in regards to kids also, the whole, um, you know, as soon as somebody is going to have a kid, the first question they're asked by everyone is, is it going to be a boy or a girl? And, you know, before they're even born, um, there's that, they're already determined, like, a whole life path of stuff. So what sort of colour they're going to like, um, what sort of activities they're going to do, what sort of toys are going to be in their bedroom, how their nursery is going to be um, decked out. And that sort of thing follows on through their entire childhood and into adult life. So there's a lot of pressure from society, from parents, from teachers, from the media, um, moulding you and pushing you into a certain direction based on your genitalia, essentially. Um, so if you're a girl... Uh, born a girl, a certain life path is presented to you. If you're born a, a boy, a certain life path is presented to you um, to become woman or man. And there, yeah, that's really pervasive and it's hard to break from. And you, know, you have to be a pretty strong-minded individual to um, sort of break through that stereotyping and moulding and um, socialising and, yeah, choose your own path, I guess. Um... Another thing that really irritates me, and this is more of an Australian-centric kind of thing, um, in Australia we have a very male-dominated, um, male-centric culture, which is kind of based on sports and um, competitiveness and uh, the Anzac spirit. And so there's a lot of pressure for a, a boy um, growing up in Australia that you kind of have to have this stereotypical, traditional, ochre, blokey, male caricature or stereotype kind of thing. Um, so the Australian male is generally seen as hard-working, hard-working family man who comes home on the weekends and sits in front of the football or the cricket sipping on a, a cold tinny with his mates while the barbecue's in the background like cooking up a nice steak or a um, snag. <laughs> so that's very much the Australian 
ideal of what a man should be. And I've never fit that. Like, I've never once in my life felt any kind of congruency <laughs> with this, like, Aussie male stereotype. Um, I don't like sport, don't like football or cricket. The only sport I've ever liked is roller derby, and I don't know if that scene is particularly manly. <laughs> um, I don't particularly like barbecues. I just don't at all gel with the archetypical vision of the Australian male. So there's that huge stereotype of what it is to be a man. And if you don't fit that, then you get called a sissy. Um, yeah, you just, you just don't fit in. So there's a lot of pressure there um, in regards to that. And it's just a stereotype. It's just a societal, traditional um, vision of what a particular person, in this case, a person with a penis should be. So, yeah, this ochre male bloke, but yeah. So, stereotypes. <laughs> That's probably all I've got to say on them. Should we have them? Probably not. I do believe stereotypes cause more grief than good. Um, things are changing, but anyone who doesn't feel at all comfortable with the, um, the, the gender that they were assigned with, the sex that they were assigned with at birth, or for anyone who's in any way um, gender non-conforming or genderqueer, um, yeah, it's pretty obvious how these stereotypical notions of what it is to be male, what it is to be female, are kind of destructive and take away your individuality and all that sort of stuff. So, hmm, it sucks. But anyway, uh, yeah, thank you for listening and I'll see you next week. Whoa.